Welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host Scotty McCoy and boy do I have a treat for you today. I have my very first wrestling icon on the phone right now. I have uh, Princess Victoria from fame with the WWF. Hello uh, Princess Victoria, how you doing? I'm doing great, Scotty. How are you today? I am doing amazing. I'm so glad that I was able to get you on the phone. I know we had an interview scheduled, what, about two weeks ago, but with that uh, hurricane that came through, uh, things got had, had to get postponed due to power outages. So uh, glad well, to have I, you on. I was, watching, I was watching you guys on the East Coast on the news, and I was doing a whole lot of things on my knees. <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, I got a couple of questions, about 11 of them for you. And the first one I got for you is, uh, how did you get your start into professional wrestling? And what made you want to become a professional wrestler? Well, in all actuality, I was kind of tricked into becoming a professional wrestler. <laughs> um, I, I was a wrestling fan. Okay. Which, to me, that's the basis. Every wrestler needs to be a fan before he becomes a wrestler. Right. And I, I uh, was working at Vinnie's on 23rd and Birdside in Portland, lost my job. I'd been going to the matches at the Chicago Sports Arena in Portland, and I knew Sandy Barr, the referee there. And that Saturday night, as I was walking into the matches, I asked Sandy, I said, I lost my job. Do you have something for me? Well, I didn't even get to watch matches that night because he put me straight to work. <laughs> and I guess it was about... Probably five, six months later, mm -hmm. Sandy had been running a wrestling training school, mm -hmm. and he approached me one night, and he said, look, I've got a girl that's wrestling, that's training to be a wrestler, but I don't have anybody to train her with. Right. Because every, all the other trainees were uh, male. Right. But, you know, can you come out and just do, you know, just do a little workout with her? You know, I'm, I'm not going to let her hurt you or anything like that. Just come out and do it. Well, I got out there, and like I said, I had no intention of becoming a wrestler. I was just a fan. Mm -hmm. And I took my first bump, ran my first set of ropes, and I was hooked. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, before, before two months was out, the girl that I was supposed to be helping train quit, and I ended up going on through the business. Right. And... That's, that's pretty much how it happened. Nice. So, um, how did it come about on you getting signed by Vince McMahon? Uh, that was through uh, Lula okay. in South Carolina. Okay. Uh, Sandy had, uh, Noah McIntyre had come down to train with us, and Sandy had booked me and Velvet for pretty much over a year. We worked for Alfonso up in uh, All Star. Okay. We worked for Ed Moretti. In fact, our first match was for Ed Moretti in uh, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Don kept us working, which it was extremely uh, rare to see women in the same territory for over, like, two weeks or three weeks. Right. Uh, Don had booked us for over a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sandy came to Velvet and I one day. And he said, look, girls, I've done all I can do. If you want to continue to get looked for wrestling, I've got only one choice. I have. And the way he said it, I probably should have taken a hint. <laughs> he said, I have no choice but to send you to Mula. Right. And I wanted to continue wrestling, so that's what happened. I uh, uh -huh. packed, my, packed what I had and made a few duffel bags, mm. got on an airplane. I flew into Charlotte. Uh, so North Carolina stopped to see a friend of mine for a couple of weeks. This this friend of mine was a uh, one of the legends and icons, and uh, the entire two weeks I was there, he kept saying, "Vicky, he said, why don't you just stay here with me?" <laughs> he said, "You can stay here. You can have the extra bedroom. You know, get yourself a job. You know, get get yourself set up." He said, I, I'd really rather not see you get a move. <laughs> but I didn't take, take the hit with him either. And uh, two weeks later, I walked into Moolah's camp. <laughs> so how... And Go ahead. she started booking me. And before I knew it, within a year, I was working... Uh, most, most of 
time I worked, I was working for uh, Vince McMahon Sr. at the WWF. Right. Right. So, so what, what was it like? I know there's a lot of like horror stories about Fabulous Moolah. Can you shed any light on them? Are they are like what did you think of Fabulous Moolah? Uh, well, there was the Fabulous Moolah, the wrestler. Right. And then there was Willie and Elisor, the business person. Right. Um, Moolah was is part of my history. Mm-hmm. You know, if it wasn't for Moolah the Wrestler or Moolah the Slave Girl, I very well may not have ever been in anywhere to where anybody would have seen me. Right. And I respect that woman. Uh, mm-hmm. Lily and Elisor, the businesswoman, I have absolutely no respect for at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know it at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't figure it out until about 20, 30 years later, but... And Judy Martin is one that actually hired a lawyer. It was found out that uh, Mula, when she was getting the checks, see, a lot of times we didn't get cash. Right. And the checks would be sent to Mula. Mm-hmm. And Judy found out she got, she had her book where she wrote down every payday in New York. And then once her and Leilani started, uh, 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 oh shoot! The tag mm-hmm. team, right. uh, the Glamour Girls. Right. Uh, she had started getting her checks directly from Vince McMahon Jr. Mm-hmm. And there was a very, very noticeable difference in the paychecks she was getting from Vince Jr. and the paychecks that she was told she got from mm-hmm. Vince Jr. from Willie. Right. And she hired a lawyer, and the lawyer said, yeah, you've got a great case. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. You, you can sue her, but you don't have the money. Right. Huh. Because Lillian had five lawyers on retainer. Mm-hmm. Um, Lillian, Lillian, uh, Lillian had in her hands a way that she could have retired never stepped foot in the ring, and probably been one of the most wealthy women in the United States. Mm-hmm. But she didn't treat her girls right. Huh. And, they, and eventually they left. Yeah. Um, when I broke my neck, she basically told me, I got no use for you. She took my gear, my brown outfit, and my yellow <laughs> sun outfit for uh, right. rent back rent and told me, well, if you can't work, you can't pay rent, you need to carry your tail. Right. So uh, we know that uh, Greg, you know Greg Gilbert, he, you, inter- you uh, interviewed with him already. He, uh, he's actually the reason why we came into connection. Um, and he wanted me to ask you about uh, this, about this uh, megastar. Because he, he said that you have like a good story and like a, a good um, understanding about who this person really is. And I just want to get an insight on that. I'm sure everybody else would like to hear about it. But what about, uh, how was uh, Hulk Hogan? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> Right. I knew Terry when he worked in the Pacific Northwest for Don Owens. Okay. And we, you know, we knew each other well. Mm-hmm. But there was one night when I, I hadn't seen him for years, you know, mm-hmm. three or four years. And Velvet and I were booked to get Joyce and, and uh, Wendy at, at Madison Square Garden. And here comes Terry. And he'll always be Terry to me, not Hulk Hogan, he's Terry. <laughs> um, here comes Terry Hogan walking down, and I went, hey, Terry, how you doing? You know, I was, it was nice to see an old friend. Right. And that prima donna stuck his nose up in the air and walked by me like he didn't know who the hell I was. Wow. And he, I, I was standing there, and I was... You know, a little bit of shock, so it took me a couple of seconds. And 
I've got a mouth, as most people will tell you. <laughs> and he got probably 20, 25 feet away from me. And I hollered out, hey, Terry, are you Madonna watch? <laughs> and Ron Kaiser happened to be sitting on a bench getting ready to do an interview. And he liked to roll on the floor laughing when I did that. That was Rowdy Roddy Piper? Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, well, he was a friend of mine, too. Awesome. How was Piper? Was he nice? Oh, Piper was... Piper was a gentleman. Nice. He was a good professional wrestler. If mm-hmm. you needed... If you wanted information from him or you wanted him to critique your match, mm-hmm. he was more than happy to do it. Uh, when the girls and I came to any territory Roddy was in, right. Roddy would make sure that we made it to the hotels and whatever towns because, like you said, right. women didn't get stay but two or three weeks, so you really didn't know the territory that well. Right. But Roddy would lead us to the motels. Um, he'd make sure that we knew where the what, where the whatever uh, venue it was, where it was. Mm-hmm. He was he was just a good all around guy, okay. and. His, his family meant more to him than anything. Nice. That's awesome. So, um, and you can thank Greg for this question as well. He told me to ask you about these two people, and I know one of them is a good is somebody you like, and another one is somebody you don't. And I, I don't want you, you don't have to hold back. You can say what you really feel. Like I really want to get the inside scoop. So, what about um, the sensational Sherry, and what about Vince McMahon Jr. Vincent Kennedy McMahon? All right, let's start with the good side. Let's start with Sherry. <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> um, I met Sherry at uh, at the camp, at Moolah's camp. Right. And she was living in a little house on the same side of the pond as Moolah was, and there was mm-hmm. a deck out in front of her uh, house that okay. went to the middle of the pond. And Sherry and I, any day that the both of us were in town, you didn't even have to think. You'd find us out on that dock. We'd be, you know, we had a six pack of beer dropped, tied by, uh, to a rope, dropped into the lake so it'd stay cold. We'd be out there sunbathing, listening to music, and talking. Right. And let me tell you what, Sherry Martell, that was one of the most beautiful souls I have ever met in my life. Mm-hmm. She, she she would take the shirt, if she only had one shirt and we were in the middle of a blizzard and I was cold, that woman would take her shirt off and put it on me so I'd be warm. Aww. And that was Sherry in a nutshell. Nice. Um, Moola, once again, Moola did not do her right. But <laughs> she was smarter than me. Uh, once she left Moola, she went straight to the boys, her brothers. Mm-hmm. which back in my day we called each other brother and sister and we were a family okay uh, she went to Buddy Rose and uh, uh, Ed Wyskowski okay and she started she started getting bookings uh, she, and then and then the infamous Sherry Martell appeared mm-hmm. uh, one of in my opinion one of the best professional managers male or female in the history of wrestling. Yeah, I, I completely can agree with that, too. She was such a professional. She did her job well. She When she was hated, she could definitely get the heat from the crowd, and I loved it. All she had to do was walk out there and give you a look. Yep. <laughs> she did not have to open her mouth. She did not have to, you know, uh, sw- slap at anybody or anything. All she had to do was walk out Strike that pose and give her up. Yep. And depending on where she was, you either hated her or loved her. Or yep. you loved to hate her. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what and about... As far oh. as Vinny's concerned, <laughs> I don't really have a good thing to say about Vinny. Okay. Um, I hold him responsible for Owen Hart's death. Okay. A lot of people hold Vince Russo responsible I hold Vinny responsible okay because in the long run the last word on whatever they were going to do was in Vinny's hands exactly and 
like uh, I was watching an interview that Piper did the other day, and like he said, what does dropping somebody out of the sky from 90 feet in the air have to do with wrestling? Yep. Um, when, when I wrestled, when it was the WWF, when I wrestled for Vince Sr., mm-hmm. and I will call him Mr. McMahon, mm-hmm. we may have only seen him for 30 seconds. Right. But he made it a point to stop in the girls' room, let us know, you know, yes, this is what I want. Yep. And to say hello and just to check on our status. Mm hmm. From the time Junior took it over, <laughs> I never saw it. Yep. And, you know, he didn't come to check on us. He didn't He didn't even recognize the fact that we were there. Right. Huh. You know, and, and what he's done to my business. Yep. Um, I'm a wrestler. Right. I'm a professional wrestler. Mm-hmm. Rose McIntyre, Judy Martin, Joyce Grable, <laughs> Leilani Kai. Yep. You know, there's Fina Montaga, Sherry Martell. They were wrestlers. Yeah. Um, I've never been a diva, and if somebody calls me a diva, I do take offense to it. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not a diva. I'm not a model. Mm-hmm. I'm not a sex kitten. I'm a professional wrestler. Exactly. Exactly. And he has, he has put a scar <laughs> on women's professional wrestling that will last for the ages. Yep. Yep. I think, I think the, the day that I learned to hate, and that's a very strong word, but it's, it's, it's mm-hmm. the way I feel about you. Yep. So if you got a call from Vince McMahon Jr. and he asked you to be a part of the WWE Hall of Fame, would you accept? Absolutely not. So the last question I got for you is more of a plug. So do you have any websites or social media accounts that you'd like to tell the listeners about that they can follow you as well as anywhere they can get any signed merchandise or memorabilia? Well, I do my own stock and merchandise and memorabilia under two, two Facebook sites. Okay. Um, Velvet McIntyre and Princess Victoria in that order on Facebook. Okay. And then I have my personal web page, which is Vicki Otis, um, V-I-C-K-I, Otis, at Facebook. And yes, I do. I have, I actually have some, uh, Kay, when, uh, when Dutch went down to get Lula's stuff, they found a whole bunch of my, uh, my memorabilia, my, my photos in there. Okay. And she sent me those, so I've been, I've been signing Signing some of those, some I, I'm kept what's left of the originals, but I have made reproductions of them, and I do sign those. Okay. Um, I've got a T-shirt uh, that uh, was actually uh, Tom Filsinger of uh, the Legends of Wrestling game. Okay. Allowed me to use the artwork off my card in the Legends of Wrestling, and I'm selling uh, T-shirts. With that on there, and I had superimposed my actual autograph on the on the T-shirt. Awesome. And you can just contact me at either one of those Facebook pages. And um, the more you buy, the easier I get. You know, the shirts start out at twenty eight dollars, including shipping. Okay. Uh, and the eight by tens are ten ten dollars a piece. A, a piece, a okay. piece <laughs> including ship, including shipping. Okay. Um, I do Venmo and uh, money orders, bank, bank checks. You know, just contact me on either one of those websites, awesome. and, and we'll uh, I'll show you everything I've got. Awesome! Sounds like a plan. Thank you so much, Victoria, for your time. I truly appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you having me on here, and I'd really like to say thank you to all those fans out there. Of course. Because without those fans. Including yourself, Scotty, I wouldn't yep. be anybody. Exactly, exactly. And I thank Greg as well. He uh, put me in touch with you. He said, had nothing but nice things to say about you. And uh, he even told me, he's like, Scotty, I, I, uh, I definitely put in a good word for you with Vic, with uh, Victoria. <laughs> oh, he did. He, he made sure that I, I knew who you were and that 
you will legit because yep. unfortunately there are some there are some phonies out there. There are, there really are, and I mean, I, it, it's funny because like I I get nervous about that myself because like these celebrities don't know me for Adam, you know, like I interview mostly the horror celebrities in that front because you know hence the name Slasher Scotty, but, but I'm trying to branch out into other entertainment aspects, and I was at my parents all last week, and about two weeks ago I think it was on a Wednesday I had an interview with somebody from the Child's Play franchise. And uh, I didn't get a chance to upload her uh, interview or the sneak peek um, until I got back from my parents' place. So uh, yeah, I was uh, I, I was like, oh gosh, I, I hope uh, I hope everybody's like, oh my god, I hope it, when is that interview going on? So I got that on there, but I'll definitely be getting yours on a lot sooner. But I'm so glad that uh, that Greg put in a good word because that just helps and ease the comfortab- uh, comfortability level also with the guests because, like you said, like you don't know if they're a phony or if they're legit, especially when they're just reaching out to you. Right, right, and it's always good. You know, if you know somebody like yourself now, Scotty, yep. like Greg, like Bob Johnson, yep. You know, have, have them if you're going if you're going to if you're going to contact, especially wrestlers, because God knows, yep. Every one of us has been scammed in one way or another, especially if we worked for Vinny Jr. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you know, have one of if you've got a friend that's a wrestler, have him reach out for you first. Okay. You know, have, have that person send, send a private message or drop a phone call or drop a text and say, hey, Scotty's going to be calling you. I know this guy. He's legit. Right. Sounds like a plan and that... it's going to be... Yeah. I mean, I had to do that with Dark Side of the Ring. I had to do that with uh, Samu and yep. Offer and Sika because Dark Side of the Ring was trying to get a hold of them and they were like, I'm not on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> to call up Sam and say, Sam, they're legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, 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 okay, Vicky. Okay, Princess. I'll, I'll, I'll return a call then. Awesome. Well, I would love to interview even Off and Seek and Samu. I mean, they're legends in their own right. You know what I mean? They're for God's sakes, they're the member of the Simone family. I mean, so I, I, I mean, if, if hey, if you could put an award for me to them, that would even be awesome. I will definitely, I, I can definitely put in a word to Sam, and Sam is basically the entrance into the dynasty. Yep. Because he's gonna, he's gonna be the one that's gonna talk to Offla and Sika, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, he's gonna say, okay, Vicky said. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I thank you again, Vicky, for you uh, doing this interview. I'm glad we were able to make it happen. I truly appreciate it, and uh, I hope you uh, stay safe during this pandemic. I know it's crazy out there nowadays, <laughs> um, but I thank right. yeah, and I thank you so much for everything, and I hope you have a good rest of your night. Thank you, and I appreciate you having me on the show. And once again, thank you to you and all those fans out there. Not a problem. I really Every one of you. Not a problem. I will definitely uh, tag you in the post, and I'll send you a message once uh, they're updated, and I'll give you the link to all the sites. All right, great. You have a good evening, everybody. I'll talk to you later. Thank you. You too. All right. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.